Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Boy, have I been busy today. Um, and last night, me and my brother and Chris have been working on a project and he had a deadline uh, for a meeting and I had to get some stuff finished and I actually worked uh, up until about four o'clock this morning finishing it up. So I slept a little late and I'm a little late bringing you Bible study, but we're here. Um, we are going to talk about the church era today, which is chapter 17 in our how to, uh, 30 days to understand in the Bible book. And I just wanted to um, touch base with y'all and let's review this book. All right. I am using my laptop to talk in, um, which works. I'm going to try not to shake it too much. I like to shake my foot when I talk, so it might be hard. I may just sit it up here on the table so that y'all don't have to be bumping around. Okay, so Chris, can you turn that computer screen off behind me? Just press the button on it. Okay, the church era. Um, we're going to start talking about that. Of course, um, like yesterday we talked about the era of the gospel, and today we're going to talk about the church. And it's, it happens, of course, after Jesus has been uh, has uh, been ascended back into heaven. Um, it says that he starts out by saying, um, "When we give ourselves." serious evaluation we're talking about the church and we know that people are imperfect and so therefore the church is imperfect imperfect as well um but that's just you know how it has to be because we're not perfect and we need to encourage each other and lift each other up more than we um you know get on to each other or uh talk about each other it says um, it says um when we give ourselves serious evaluation um we find things hidden in our hearts that, if we choose, we would remove. Our hearts have been described as a zoo of lust, um, a bedlam of ambitions, a nursery of fears, a harem of fondled hatred. Yet the church, by its nature, must be made up of the like of us. Imagine yourself living, he tells us to imagine ourselves living in the house, and Jesus is coming to kind of like rebuild us, um, like you would rebuild a house. And, and then he says, and thus is the message of the church. The gospel is carried to imperfect people by imperfect people. And then those imperfect people are band together to help one another grow to spiritual maturity. Salvation in Christ and growth to Christian maturity um, is what we need to strive for, right? And this um, church era is split up into four sections. And the first one is creation. And that's when the birth of the church happened. And that's when um, after his death, it says, Jesus instructs his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until they receive the power of the Holy Ghost. And uh, it does come in. It uh, ascends, let's see, it says, while they are gathered, the Holy Spirit comes upon Jesus' disciples. While they are gathered in the house, a sound like a violent rushing wind fills the place, and flames of fire rest on each disciple, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And they begin speaking in different languages, with the result that many of the Jews from different parts of the world hear them speak in their own language. Um, this and other miracles take place in the early days as the number of converts to Christianity increases rapidly. My brother's calling me and we have this project and I have to answer. I'm in the middle of my Bible study, but I didn't send you the gymnasium. Did you get it? Yes, and I'm live, so I gotta go. Bye. Sorry, y'all. Been working today. Okay, 
So the birth of the church happens when the Holy Spirit comes down and lands on the disciples um, while they are in uh, Jerusalem. And this gives them power and uh, gives them power through the Holy Spirit to perform miracles and um, it helps create the birth of the church. Because when we are saved, we, we actually um, receive the Holy Spirit as well and we um, are part of the church. It's, it's the growth, the organization of the church. Peter organizes, it's done by Peter, and he organizes a relief effort for needy Christians. He um, says those who have possessions could sell them and give money to the apostles who distribute it according to their needs. Um, so in the early church, they actually helped people a lot. And um, we still do that today, but not maybe quite as much as they did then. Um, it says the deacons are chosen to look after material needs of the church while apostles attend to the spiritual needs. Um, persecution. The first Christian martyr is the third section and it talks about Stephen and he he's preaching the gospel and the Jews, uh, not the Jews, but the, uh, yeah, it says the Jews. The Jews stone him to death because they don't want him preaching the gospel. He's the first Christian martyr, and after that happens, then a lot of them were persecuted, and a lot of them fleed from Jerusalem, causing them to actually spread the gospel in other parts of the world. And then the fourth section is transition, and it is about the popular missionary Paul. And it talks about um, how he was on the road to Damascus, and um, Let's see, I'll just read it to you. Shortly afterwards, he is journeying to Damascus to, uh, to find and persecute other Christians. When Jesus appears to him from heaven and Saul is converted to Christianity, Jesus changes Saul's name to Paul and that he will become a missionary to the Gentiles. This is why it's called transition. It says, this marks a transition in the nature of the church because at this time, the message has been circulated exclusively to the Jews. So I talked about that the other day, um, that we're, we're lucky to live in this period of grace where God actually accepts the Gentile people as his children, uh, thanks to uh, Jesus and thanks to his, this period of grace. Otherwise, we wouldn't even um, have the opportunity to be a child of God and to be saved. Um, and we should be thankful for that. And um, remember, I, I was going to talk to you a little bit about, that's really the Bible study today. Um, so we formed the church, the creation of the church, um, and then the four um, I'd have to look it back up, but I can't remember it right off the top of my head. But of course, it's Peter, and um, and then Paul does start the end. But I think well, I think the next one is missionaries, probably. Let's see. Yeah, the missions era. And that will be with Paul. Um, but I wanted to touch base with y'all. I noticed somebody did watch my video on um, does using the word, oh God, or uh, Lord of mercy or something like that. Is that uh, taking the Lord's name in vain? And I noticed that somebody did watch my video and they still feel like saying, oh God is wrong. And I just want to say that we all have different convictions and personal convictions. And of course, if you feel personally convicted, then um, to you, that is wrong. But keep in mind, it talks about that, but it's very clear that it's a lot deeper meaning than just saying, oh God, it has to do with our heart. Um, God has always been in the heart business, even from the early um, creation. With Abraham, um, he was saved by faith. With with Moses, he was saved by faith, and today we are saved by faith. Um, the law was created to give us instruction, and it was quite evident that we could not follow the law. 
let me just say that even if we try to follow the Ten Commandments, they're still the law. Taking the Lord's name in vain is part of their law. Can I say that in the church era, in this period of grace, we are free from the law? Um, so um, it doesn't mean that we're supposed to willfully sin at all. But another thing you have to remember is we're not bound by sin anymore. We're not bound by, you know, oh, you did this or oh, you did that or oh, you said this or oh, you said that. We are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. So um, I think it's okay as long as you're not finger pointing at people. Um, I think it's okay to judge, and I don't think that unequally yoked people should hang out together. And what I mean by that is if you're a Christian, you shouldn't want to hang out with people who cuss like a sailor and, and get drunk and do things like that. Um, you should want to be um, more in God's will and to follow his word. But it doesn't mean we have to, um, it doesn't also mean that we have to um, follow every little law. So if you want to, when it comes right down to it, if you want to pick out calling somebody out for saying, oh God, or Lord of mercy, then you also have to pick every other law, which was like hundreds of them, and try to follow them, okay? So, um, and I know that's one of the Ten Commandments, but we have to be careful when it comes to um, thinking that we are doing something, I don't know, I don't know how to put it, I just know that um, we are, we can judge, actually, we can judge each other as Christians, and we can let each other know if we're out of God's will, so that we can encourage a Christian to stay on the right track. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Like a lot of people say, you know, it's not our place to judge, only God judges, and that is true to a certain extent, but if you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit living in you, you should be able to uh, have some spiritual discernment when it comes to your friends and family. And um, after all, when Christ comes back and we're, we're all uh, part of his team, we'll actually be judges. And so, um, of course, we'll know a lot more then. But I'm just, it, there's a fine line there. So what I'm trying to say is um, if you want a finger point, for one sin uh, and you want to go by the law, then you got to finger point yourself for all the other things that you don't follow in the law. And really, we're free of it, y'all. We're in the period of grace. Christ loves us. We sin every day in different ways. We, things go through our mind that shouldn't. And um, so we need to be real careful um, and make sure that when we study a subject, we do study it extensively. And I believe, I truly believe in my heart and from what I've read, that taking the Lord's name in vain is a lot more than saying a bad word. I think it has a lot more to do with your heart and um, defying who God is uh, than it is using a slang word. Um, so y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I do, it says great words Let's see, I was just going to look at your comments. Great words of wisdom. Hello, discernment. Yeah, Willie Jean. Um, but just be careful with uh, how we judge and how we think about people and how we think we're, we should never think we're better or um, more righteous than somebody else because only God knows our hearts. And uh, the Pharisees thought they were doing everything right. They were going by every rule and every, you know, dotting every T and, I mean, dotting every I and crossing every T, but their hearts were wicked. So um, we had to be real careful with that because the things we do doesn't really matter that much to God. It's our heart. Um, now, when I say that, I don't mean everything we do. It's just hard to say, y'all. It's hard to put it down in words. Um, of course, God cares about the things we do, uh, but he wants us in his will. The main thing is if we get in his word and we read, then we're going to follow and we're going to uh, be led by the Holy Spirit more and we're going to be a better Christian and we're going to be able to shine his light more. And um, I just hope y'all have a wonderful day. I'm sorry I'm late coming in. 
but we have had a very busy day. Um, and the church is an incredible thing. Um, and like I said, we're imperfect. There's nothing, and it doesn't matter which church you go to. It doesn't matter what kind of church you go to. There's problems. And um, that's just the way it is because people are there. And as long as people are in charge of the church, which we are, um, there'll be problems. But we're supposed to be going for worship in the Lord instead of all the other things that we go for. Uh, like entertainment and how they can help us and how they can entertain our kids or teach our kids. Uh, really, we should be going to church for worship and more than anything else. Um, so let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for another day to be able to get in your word and learn more about you. I pray that you would help us understand the fine line between discernment and judgmental behaviors towards other people. Um, I pray that you would always help us um, have a soft heart, a loving heart, a kind heart, a forgiving heart uh, like you do. And I just thank you for uh, allowing us to live in this age of grace where we are able to come into your family as children uh, through your son, Jesus Christ, who has sacrificed um, his life for us and our sins so that we could... Um, have a relationship again with you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Lord, I just babble on y'all. Um, but I hope y'all are having a good day. I want to go see my mama today. And um, I'm glad I got that finished for Eddie. I'm really tired. I didn't, I probably slept maybe five hours, I guess. So um, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for watching Real Southern Women. Bye.